Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Nintendo fan video. As you can see, I'm here in Animal Crossing New Horizons again, and we're here for another Animal Crossing design video. Now, somewhat unlike my other ones, this one's going to be kind of more retrospective, as I've already done the area we're going to be talking about. But hopefully I can use what I have done to give you some tips, uh, and hopefully help you out a little bit, if you want to go ahead and design this area. So what we are talking about right now is the neighborhood. And so a lot there's a lot of different like I guess schools of thought you would say in how to design a neighborhood in Animal Crossing. Everyone kind of has their own um kind of ideas and style. A lot of people like to have them just naturally spread out across the island, which I've always thought was quite nice. Uh but I decided that I kind of wanted mine to have a very residential feel that just all kind of in the same place. And now, of course, when you go with that, I had mine before with very small yards. You could go minimalistic, or you could give them their own yards that are personalized, and that's kind of what I've done here. But we're going to kind of divide this video into two portions. They're both going to be fairly small sections, uh, and just talk about different types. So the two kinds that I have on my island right now, uh, or the way I would describe it, is I have residential neighborhood, or which is kind of the area I'm in right now, where I have kind of... Um, should be say normalized I guess um little backyards that are all kind of in a similar space but all have a different kind of feel and design to them that fits the personality of the villager uh, so it's still giving them some space and kind of making it special for them but at the same time it's kind of more uh they're more similar I guess you would say and then I have some uh as I would call specialty villager homes and those are where I've specifically dedicated a fairly larger area to their area based on another aspect. So it's kind of a similar way. I'm just going more all out. And some people might want to do full special stuff. I just didn't want to use that much space on my island. So if we look on my map, you can see I'm in a neighborhood district right here with seven houses. And then those other three houses up there, those are going to be my specialty areas. So let's go ahead and talk about the normal one. So this kind of residential area first. Sorry, this is going to be, this video is going to have a lot of talking for me. So I apologize for that in advance, but let's get right into it. Let's do it. So you can see I have seven of my villagers here that I didn't want to dedicate a full area to, but I've still given them little areas. So what I did want to do was make sure that they all had different types of fencing. And of course, this is, you could totally give them the same fencing, but I think giving them different types really kind of fleshes out their area and makes it more unique. So you can see for Octavian's house, I have matched the imperial fencing because I thought that was a nice match. And then I had some red diner furniture, so I go ahead and put that in. And I give them uh, one square on the left, or no, sorry, on the edge they have one square. I give them five squares between houses, and so... That's usually four squares for their actual uh, kind of side yard, and then one for the fencing to fully go in. And you can see we've repeated that with Kid here. And then Marina, I needed a pathway to go through, so I shortened hers to three and gave Pango one. Uh, and I haven't actually done Pangos yet, but I plan on giving it Imperial Furniture. So while I gave Imperial uh, Fencing for the house uh, for Octavian, I'm gonna give the other one, uh, or sorry, Imperial Furniture to Pango. So what I like to do is kind of match the fencing uh, often to the outside of the house and so the like the physical looks to it and then I match the furniture more to their personality. Still somewhat focusing on that uh, on the kind of I guess visual aspect but um, more on their personality. So you can see like Octavian's is still red but I haven't gone with the just with the outside of his house looking imperial. I haven't gone full on with the imperial furniture. I kind of spiced it up a little bit, little bit. did kind of a diner because I thought that might be interesting. With Kid you can see I have the rope furniture because his house is very kind of chic. It's not overdoing it. And then over here I've more matched his personality. Again it still fits with the house but it's a little bit different. He has a lot of rat and furniture inside, so I've given him a rat and waste bin, a little uh, Newton's cradle. I associate with Kid a lot, and I like Newton's cradles. And then we've got this very slim, minimalistic de uh, desk, and then kind of a plush uh, piano uh, piano stool, I believe. And so I quite like that. And then with Marina, I went a little simplistic, uh, but I like it. She's just got a nice little bench there. She likes to sit and read. I think she doesn't need too much, or at least I like to think that way. 
And then you can see with Pango, I went with the Zen fencing because her house is a very kind of um, pastel color scheme. And so I've used kind of the Zen fencing, which is, again, more pastel. It's not got super strong colors, which is good. And then I'll put some imperial furniture in here to more match her personality. So we've gone over those four, and now we have three here. So with Zucker, you can see I have to do his as well. But the fencing, I believe, very much matched the outside of the house here. The corral fencing, I think, goes quite well with just the kind of flat-up wood of his house. And then I plan... I'm not totally sure what I'll do here, but I'm thinking maybe like a slide or a little elephant slide, perhaps, or something that kind of fits his playful personality. Because uh, he is a lazy villager, if I'm correct. Then with Barbara, I had to shorten hers backyard as well. So I thought it would be nice just to give her this little iron garden chair. Uh, it's, I, so I think the stone goes well with her house. Because, again, it's one of the more subtle colors. Uh, and it's not too in your face. And then these iron garden furniture, also kind of a cool color scheme. But her house, she's kind of similar to Kid. It's more minimalistic and just kind of, uh, but elegant in the same way. So I thought that fit nicely. And then of course with Cube, uh, this is a little met, uh, sorry, a little less matching his house. But I thought the hedges would fit very nicely. And I do like the way they look. I think they look good with the house. But um, if I were just basing it off the house, I might have simply done uh, simply wood fencing or perhaps vertical board fencing. But I liked this uh, hedge combo here. And then I've added some rainbow roses and a hammock here. Because you know that's what Cube would like to do. Just kind of sit down with a hammock. Uh, so yeah. And then for pathways, you're going to probably find a lot of custom pathways out there that you do like. And that you think um, are going to work. I think brick is a common one to go with that's really nice. You could do arch tile if you're going with the basic so yeah, if you're going with kind of just um, the normal pathways that the game gives you, I probably wouldn't go brick in this case, because the brick isn't truly like a brick path, if you know what I mean. It's um, more interconnected than that. I don't know. That's just my view, though. I would probably go with arch tile or stone, because I think those quite work quite nicely for a pathway. But what I've actually done here is I have added, or I put the stone pathway down first, and then I put this quite nice... Um, I forgot exactly what it's called. I think it's tiles, maybe, if you want to search it up. But I'm not 100% sure. Uh, let's actually, let's find out. Because if you want it, I want to make sure it's available. It's paving. So if you search up paving, that's there. And I put paving on top of the stone tiles, and I or the stone pathway. And I think the texture ends up looking quite nice that way. So I really like how that came out. Anyway, now that we've kind of talked about the more regulated villager housing... Oh, and I forgot to note, you're probably going to want to find a big flat space if you're doing the residential. If you're doing special, you could kind of fit them in anywhere you think is best. But um, yeah, if you're doing special, then you definitely want to uh, go ahead and try and, I suppose, make it... Sorry, I'm losing my train of thought. If you're doing regular, then you're probably going to want to keep it in a flat area. Anyway, now we're kind of moving on to specialty. So I have two houses over there and one house here, and this is where I've more f gone full in and focused on an aspect, whether it be visual or their personality, and had that kind of take up a larger area than normal, just dedicate a full space to it. So here we have Eric's house, and this is more based off the visual for him. Of course, he's a deer, and he is probably uh, very famously one of the best winter villagers to have on your island, and his house looks like a log cabin. It's very fall-like. The inside is very wintry. And so I'm basing this mostly off of the outside. So I've put him up on higher ground than everyone else. Everyone else is on the first floor. But I have put him on the second floor because uh, I think log cabin more likely to be on a mountain and such. And I've placed it near the campsite because I think that's kind of a very similar vibe. Because again, we did a design video on this. It's all about rustic. So I've just tried to make his very outside-like, given him a huge backyard uh, and space near the campsite. So I've kind of dedicated this area to his house. So I don't have too much to say on that, but uh, hopefully an end card is popping up right about now. If you want to go check that video out, you can. That was actually the first Animal Crossing design video I did. Anyway, let's head down the staircase. And the last two we have are Axel and Igly. And these are my jocks. So in this case, I based it off their personalities. Eric's was more on his appearance or his house's appearance. These are based off their personalities. And so what I've done is I've carved out, if we check the map, I've carved out a little area. Uh, around them and they just have this kind of little uh, sheltered alcove where I built a gym for them 
And I quite like this area just because it's very secluded and there's the little kind of semi-secret passageway in. And uh, I just think it's really nice like that they have a communal gym they both step out of their houses and go to. So we have two pull-up bars here, a basketball hoop, lots of clothing here. We've got an exercise bike right there. Let's turn that on. Uh, football and some katanas and then two climbing walls next to each other. And I, I don't know. This area is very simple, but I quite like it. I think dedicating an area of space was very nice because not giving them much space doesn't work as well, I think. Because if you're basing it off of like personality, like a jock, uh, you really need, and you're trying to do a specialty thing, you really need a big amount of space. You can't fit that into a residential area. And that's kind of why uh, I recommend doing specialty, uh, maybe for your favorite villager or a villager that you just think uh, should have a dedicated space for their personality or appearance. Anyway, I think that's going to be it. Sorry, that was a long period of me talking, but... um. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you can apply some of the tips that I've been talking about uh, if you're planning on setting up a little area for your villager. Anyway, again, I hope you enjoyed the video and have a great day.